to give credit where credit is due, Excel is actually a pretty great visualization tool. I'm going to give you a little speed run with like the five main principles I use to start building stuff like this in Excel. Surprisingly, no harder in Excel than any other tool. And you can actually do a lot of stuff a lot faster here than you might be able to in some other BI tools or frankly, even in PowerPoint. All right, so big blank sheet. We're going to hit command A to select all our cells and give them a nice kind of dark background. This kind of a bluish gray for all my color fanatics out there. It's a uh, 434654. <laughs> First principle is inserting text boxes. That's just up here under the insert tab. You got to click and drag to drop them in. First thing you always got to do is remove the background and the outline. These are obviously made for somebody working in a typical spreadsheet with grid lines behind it. So they have that background to cover it up. We don't want it though, because we're going to be doing custom backgrounds for all of ours. Put in your placeholder text. First little tip, make sure everything is to the right of column A up here. We're going to use column A just to adjust our padding when we need to and give us space along the left-hand side. And if it overlaps, it's going to distort everything that overlaps the column. Go ahead and move this down. Now, next thing you're going to, I next little tip here, I just copy paste my text so I don't have to keep removing the background over and over again. But don't be afraid to get creative with your fonts here. Use different colors, use different styles, use it just the same way you would in PowerPoint. And this is another principle to keep in mind here, which is that trying to maintain some consistency with your primary and secondary fonts can help a lot, right? So if we're going to use this bright yellow or orange color, this is going to kind of indicate something's important from now on. It's our highlight color, probably. We might also have a secondary header size like this that we're going to use in the future when something's not the main title of the page, but just something secondary. And then we also want to define what we're going to use for like our contextual text, these smaller fonts that in this case, we've done it in a slightly grayer color, so it doesn't stand out as much, but it's still totally readable. Next, we're going to drop some images in. I'm just going to use stock images for this, but you could use whatever images you want. Insert tab, pictures menu. I'm going to hit place over cells, and I'm just going to go to stock images. Now, I've dropped three images in here, and you'll notice I've kind of made them a little darker, washed them out, and adjust their sizing. Let me just show you how you do how to do that with one example, so you don't have to watch me do it three times in a row. So I just took my my images. Now I right click them and hit size and properties to open up this menu over here. And I just adjusted their size to be the same for every single image. In this case, I think I went with a height of 12 inches, maybe a little, maybe a tad bigger. <laughs> and then I cropped all of them. That's just under the picture format tab here. You can hit crop and then you just drag it over to get it roughly the size you want. I think with these, I want roughly seven by 12 for all of them. And again, we're, we're gonna do this and make sure they're the exact same size for each one. And then I just did some really basic adjustments here, and you can also do that in the formatting pane or up here in the picture format menu if you want. Um, so the things I did first, I actually just gave it a little drop shadow. That's right here. You have the option to drop in a drop shadow. And then I just uh, increased the size of it a little because I like a bigger, more kind of blurry drop shadow. I then went over here and I just adjusted two things. My brightness, I dropped down a little bit and then I made it a little transparent until it looked just about right. I went through that same process with all three images and these just give us little blocks or sections that we're then going to fill in with separate information. So I'm just going to copy paste fonts again here so we don't have to add them from scratch. Uh, you're probably going to notice here I'm just using lorem ipsum and just random text and obviously none of this really makes sense but uh, still worth doing. Now, we need to organize our page at this stage. We got our text, we got our images, backgrounds, shapes, all that. So first thing I did, hit held shift and clicked on all three images. And then under picture format, I went over to the align menu and I made sure it was distributed horizontally and aligned at the top, just so everything is perfectly aligned. This level of organization is so important for making something that looks professional. You can then do the same thing to all your fonts, just getting related fonts and making sure they're aligned at the top. And that is going to be under shape format in this case, instead of image format. Next, we need to think about visuals. I'm going to put in some uh, geo charts just because people love that. I'll give an examples of a couple other chart types. And what I'm going to do in this example is just pull these from this little uh, sample file I put together for the newsletter. We built all these visuals just using this little tiny data set here, just as an example to show you what was possible. We're just going to pull some of these over. Geo charts are pretty straightforward. You just highlight your data, make sure that you have obviously geolocations in there. Go to the insert tab and under charts, there is a maps option. Uh, and it's going to drop it in for you. Oh, let me show you these. Now, of course, I have much more in-depth videos on how to customize these, but just the basics. 
Uh, when you click into your geo chart and go to the format area, you can choose map projection, map area. The most important one is map area. Do you want to show only regions that have data? That would be like this example. Or do you want to show the entire region, even areas without data? That's this upper example here. Or do you want to show like the whole world? You can define your upper range color and lower range color, meaning it fills in each country using a gradient. So darker colors or lighter colors, meaning there's more or a higher value there uh, and vice versa. Uh, and as always, just the charts in the same way we did with our, our text earlier, we always want to make sure if we have backgrounds that we're creating ourselves, that we make sure our charts have no fill and no line. Because if this had a fill, obviously it wouldn't look very good. So just keep that in mind as we add in every chart, we're going through that same process. In this example here, I've just added in a little more text just give us some room to give some contextual information if we want it. I've also just added in these little shapes here under the insert tab. You can add these little guideline shapes. Uh, there's lots of options to do it. I've just made these uh, white and just kind of turned the transparency up a little so they're a little transparent. But what I want to kind of highlight here is that it is worth it to take a little time to add supplemental information, add little graphics. You can really treat this like PowerPoint and that's going to help you communicate a little bit more effectively. Now for our other two sections here, I've just dropped in a uh, horizontal bar chart and a double donut chart. Um, I'm not going to go too deep into how to how I did these. Um, I've got a bunch of videos on how to create different chart types like this that you can watch if you want to see really in-depth instructions. Uh, these are really standard chart types. They work exactly the same way that normal charts work. The real highlights here are just that I've customized them a little bit. So I'll just, I'm going to give you the quick highlights on how I've customized these. Obviously I dropped out the background. I updated our font to a font that had nice clear contrast. So I used white on a dark background or black on a lighter color background. So that's really easy to read the font. In this case, for our bars, I've given them a gradient fill. That is an option under the fill menu over here. You can hit gradient fill, define the direction of the gradient. In this case, 180 degrees is across. And then on one side, we've just given it a sort of slightly transparent white and on the other side, a fully transparent white. Same thing for the other one, except in blue. And they both have a solid line white outline, 1.25 font at about 50% transparency. And then I just gave it a little font, a little text beneath it to make clear. Now, this was hard to read on this pattern background. So what I did is I just put a little rounded rectangle behind it insert tab shapes rounded rectangle and i just gave it a uh, black fill that is like 60 percent transparent so that it's a little easier to see the chart on this background uh, if you do this yourself and you're having trouble with the layers just keep in mind you can always right click any element in excel and hit bring to front and it will take whatever is stuck behind one of your shapes and move it in front of one of your shapes. Just a simple trick to have. Double donuts. They work just like a donut chart, but literally all you're going to do is instead of, I'll show you here, instead of just selecting one column of data, just select two and it's going to turn your chart into a double donut instead of a single donut. Pretty straightforward here. That's all we did here. And I really, all I did was just take the fill colors here, click into each color, meaning each little segment we have I've clicked into. And then I went over to our formatting menu and I just turned the transparency up to like 50% on each color. So it kind of blends in more with the background. That's just a really simple trick for color palettes. If you're struggling to get something to match your overall color palette, you can sometimes just crank up the transparency of it and it'll kind of fix the issue for you. It doesn't always work, but it's worth trying. And voila, before you know it, we got this fun little dashboard behind us. This is going to work really well if you have a report that say you're rebuilding each week or month or quarter and you're really just changing your source data. Because if we went in here to this little source table we used before and we updated this data, it would update our actual visualizations and charts. We could even include metrics, text boxes that update according to whatever we put in there. So it can be a huge time saver if you've just got an Excel report that you're using anyways to generate your presentation. Or if you've got any kind of report in general that you want dynamically updated and you just want to work some visuals into it. I mean, the short version here is really just start playing with these. If this isn't the right scenario for you, that's okay. But think about opportunities you might have to be a little more flexible with using visuals, imagery, text, fonts, all that kind of fun stuff that you probably already know how to use in PowerPoint. 
And of course, if you want a copy of this template or any of the other templates you've seen in any of my videos, I send them out for free every single week. Uh, I got a link in my bio uh, with all that. And if you don't see the link in bio, just head over to my, uh, my YouTube and you can find all that info over there. I also have the links on that account as well. That's really it for now, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. If you got questions, let me know. Talk to y'all soon. Bye.